Farmerville, Episode 2, Laura Unhinged. The story began Friday night with a surprising and gruesome discovery. As the story continues, we will learn about a previous devastating family event. Ron's friends, Jack, Charles, and Mark, pay him a visit. Laura experiences unsettling flashbacks and finds a boyfriend. Will the supposed witch doctor of Farmerville make foreshadowing predictions? Will another Farmerville secret be in danger of being exposed by an ambitious journalist? I already asked you if you believe in destiny, coincidences, heaven and hell, good and evil. Do you? Do you believe in fate? The Update Outside the Barn Laura listened intently as Ron grasped her shoulders. Laura, you don't understand and don't know things about your home, this town. It has secrets, not all good. Some bad secrets, really bad. Probably secrets that should stay secret. And with this fiasco, everything will change. Everything. Her dad's demeanor changed. He looked worried. She had no idea what he meant by everything would change. They moved their cars off the driveway, away from the gate, to make room for the arrival of emergency vehicles. The first three vehicles were deputies, one being Thomas Holt. Tom, a black man from New York City, like Ron, was a retired Army Green Beret. You all right, brother? Tom asked and gave Ron a bear hug. Yeah, man, we're good. How about you, Laura? Tom asked with a smile and a shoulder hug. Got to kick some hillbilly psycho asses, she said. Best part is, I got a story Dad will never be able to live down about how I saved him. Really? Tom looked at Ron. What happened? I'd rather not tell this story more than once, if you don't mind waiting a minute till Ken gets here. Ron motioned toward the sheriff's car pulling up. 58-year-old Ken Farmer, Ron's uncle, had been the Cherokee County Sheriff for 15 years. Ken retired a lieutenant colonel from the Marine Corps a few years after 9-11 and returned to his hometown of Farmerville. He took over the sheriff's position when the previous sheriff died unexpectedly. Ken was a no-nonsense law sheriff and what many would consider the epitome of law enforcement. His presence projected a sense of calm and command, regardless of the situation or who he engaged with. Even now, his approach brought relief to Ron. Two more deputies arrived and walked up with Ken. Major Billy Sandoval, a good friend and Ken's second-in-command, and Deputy Keisha Jones. I see you both still standing, so guess you're all okay, Ken bellowed. Ron gave a rundown of what happened while Laura added her part. Tom said, You are right, Laura. No way your dad will get away from this story as Keisha gave Ron a light hug and said, You're toast. I'll make sure of that, Ken added laughing. More emergency vehicles turned off the highway. Ron changed the conversation. We still got about 20 or more people inside that barn we got to get taken care of. There's that girl too in Dad's car. Guess no way we're keeping this a secret, Ken said nonchalantly. Ah, shit. Let me make some calls. FBI definitely needs in on this, and we already got state on the way. Major Sandoval took charge. Deputy Jones walked over to Ron's car to check on the girl. Ron headed to the barn to give the detectives a walkthrough. Tom went along. Ron, you sure you all right? Tom asked again. Yeah, Tom, I'm good. You look a little bit frazzled. I'm just concerned. We went through some hairy shit back in the stand, but we never got tied up. I'm good. What I'm worried about is how all this will wash out. The publicity could be a problem, Tom answered. As they entered the barn, Tom spotted blood on Ron's back. Damn, Ron, you're bleeding. Let me look. Really? Yeah, looks like that ax got through just a smidge. Enough that you'll need stitched up, Tom said as they started laughing, a common reaction for military combat veterans.